Hey, what is up you guys? It's Dustin and I'm back with another video and in this video there's a few things that I want to talk about. I want to talk about Mama June and her spending all of Honey Boo Boo's money. Then I want to talk about James Charles and this horrible Party City wig that he debuted at Coachella because there were people responding to the TikTok that I posted. I just want to address them. And then at the end of this video, I want to talk about how Jojo Siwa finally got her karma. So if you are here for that, stay tuned to this video. Okay, so first things first, and I do not know a lot about Honey Boo Boo and Mama June. I just know who they are because I've seen them on TV throughout the years. I really don't know any of the lore about toddlers and tiaras. I don't know anything about any of that. I just know the gossip and what I used to read on the tabloids from back in the day. And really, truthfully, the only thing I know about Mama June is that she was really big. She lost a lot of weight, and then she got big again, and then she went through this, like, crisis with like her health and stuff because she was like addicted to crack or whatever and we're going to talk about that in a minute but that's really the gist of what I know about them I don't know a lot of the background but basically what I want to talk about is how Mama June allegedly smoked up five hundred thousand dollars from Alana's bank account crackhead my first question is like how much is that is that even humanly possible? Like $500,000 worth of crack, girl, crack? Rumor said, yeah. I object, Your Honor. You object to the rumor or you object to being the crackhead? To being the crackhead. Like, how does that, how, how does one, how does one even do that? first and foremost. So that's suspect to me. And I tweeted out about this because there was a lot of people talking about Mama June on Twitter in the replies to me. And they were saying that there's no way that that much, that she could have done that much. So they think that maybe she took that money and did something with it, which if it's not in the Coogan account or whatever it is that she keeps referring to, then where in the hell is it? Because I was also scrolling TikTok earlier. Guess who came across my feed? It was Mama June. And I was like, what is this bitch doing? And you know what she was doing? She was opening Jeffree Star Cosmetics. Okay, last and final is Jeffree Star's lip glosses. With every thing that you get, you get a card. Let me tell you, I only ordered two of these lip glosses. They had Jeffree Cosmetics, um, Tequila Baby, you doing the damn thing, okay? These clips of Mama June and Honey Boo Boo have been going viral for weeks now about her spending up all her money and Alana can't pay for her college or whatever, right? So why the hell... Is Mama June buying cosmetics when she's in debt to Alana and she can't pay her all that money back? Money. Like, that should be the last thing she should be buying. I also tweeted out about this. I was like, well, where in the hell is all her money, Mama June? And somebody replied back to me and said, well, part of it's with Jeffree Star now. And I was gagged. But have you guys been seeing this? Do you follow Honey Boo Boo? I want to know what your thoughts on this situation is. I think it's terrible, especially for Alana because she is very young, that her mom did this to her. Like, is there any money left? Do we know how much money she had to start with versus what is supposed to be there now? Or is it just like all gone? Because I know that Mama June is trying to say, oh, well, I did this in my addiction. And I, listen, I don't want to come for anybody in their addiction and crisis or whatever, but you cannot use that as an excuse for you doing something like that. Like, that's a whole lot of money, June. That's so much money, lady. Like, I would be pissed if I was Alana. Like, she can, she can probably never even recover this money because it's gone. It probably really is gone. I think at the end of the day, the money's gone. She's spending I don't think she's hoarding it or putting it anywhere. I just think it's gone. I just think she was probably terrible at managing money. She thought that maybe she would recoup that money because Honey Boo Boo was going to make more money and she wouldn't even know it was gone. But that's just my opinion. They were really getting into it. I thought that somebody was going to be moving furniture up in there. It was like going to break out at any moment. I thought Honey Boo Boo was going to throw a punch. What do you think about it down below if you follow this, if you keep up with her? I don't, but I am into this because I think it's really shitty of Mama June to do this to her. Okay, so now I guess we need to talk about James Charles and that wig. <laughs> And this is going to be about a bit more than that wig, but I did want to talk about the wig because the wig is bad, girl. The wig is bad. And there was somebody that responded to the post that uh, I posted on TikTok that ended up actually getting taken down 
because it was mean or hateful or whatever, and I had to appeal it, and it got put back up. TikTok always seems to do that. I believe that they protect James Charles over there, but that's neither here nor there. That's not really pertinent to this conversation. But someone replied back to the post that I posted yesterday with the receipts that were actually in my video that I posted here on YouTube, and they were saying that the wig was bad. And somebody responded to them and they tried to make an argument by saying that he paid $5,000 for this wig, so they don't understand what a good wig is anyway. He bought it from an expensive brand, so don't talk shit when you don't know something. Newsflash, buddy. Apparently, you don't know, but you should know that you can pay for something, and it be trash, and it be very expensive. That wig looks like it came from Party City. I can't believe that you're defending a predator over a Party City wig embarrassing and i'm just sat here thinking the whole time while i'm reading this that it doesn't matter how much you pay for something it can still be gaudy tacky and ugly the wig is terrible it's bad it's bad as about 15 miles of bad country road it's not good at all at all girl it's giving very much grinch but I think the best way I could describe this is, look at everything that Jeffree Star has. That man has more money than you could possibly ever dream of having in your life. And he has all this ugly designer shit. What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. So money and the cost of things does not matter. You can still get a piece of shit and pay $5,000 for it. Look at James Charles's head sitting on there right now. And that's really all I had to say about that because I know I did get a lot of comments of people talking about the Alabama boy and that actually became a search trend on TikTok. I got notified of that. I didn't even know that that was a thing that they did, but there's a lot of people that want to know about that. If you guys want me to dig further into that, let me know down below. Okay, so I decided to step outside to finish off this video, but I wanted to talk about JoJo Siwa and Britt Smith. Now, a lot of people didn't even know who Britt Smith was before this. Nick, did you know who Britt Smith was? I had surely never heard of her, but I was watching an interview that came up on her TikTok that is now going viral, where she said that she worked with Wow Hair. Is it Wow Hair with Chris Appleton? If people haven't heard the name Britt Smith, they are definitely about to, especially if they go down a TikTok rabbit hole right about now, because you seem to have something a little common with Jojo Siwa, the song Karma that's out. Now, from what I understand, you actually recorded this song back in 2012? Yes. Yeah, back in 2012. So it's a shock to me that it's got a new life, which is amazing. But yeah, with um, Rock Mafia back in the day, it was supposed to be my first single. Um, and just sort of things changed and I went with Provocative um, instead and shouldn't have done that really. We should have gone with Karma. That was my first choice, but label things <laughs> got in the way and I kind of was led um, in that direction and we went with provocative and then I left the industry after that. Are you still currently putting out music? Is there something that we can listen to or have you given up on the whole music scene? Well, I have kind of given up. I gave it a lot of time in my life um, and I now uh, work at Color Wow, a hair company, but I- Oh, with Chris Appleton. Yes, yes, exactly, what? yep. <laughs> Which is crazy to, to see that she's like not that far removed from the social media aspect of everything. Yeah, like I wonder if Britt Smith knows where the, the Chanel bags are that Chris Appleton and Michaela didn't give away. You guys, I've really actually been streaming this song a whole lot. How many times have you heard me play this song? Several, several times. I have contributed, I, I think I myself, I have contributed to her getting on the top five iTunes music chart, which is actually amazing. Did you think that JoJo Siwa had any anticipation that Beth Saw would go viral for that reason? I don't think she did. She was out here doing all these interviews trying to make it seem like she kind of like came up with this song. She was coming out with her own genre of music and doing things. This song is special. Karma is special. This was two years ago. So I was, I was 18 still. I was very afraid of the lyrics of Karma. I wasn't ready to say I was a bad girl. I wasn't ready to say I should have known better. If I had a wish, I would have never effed around. Another late night, another crazy mood, and I didn't think twice what it would do to you. I didn't feel comfortable saying that yet. I didn't feel comfortable singing that yet. But I, I told her, I said, this song is special. I want it. It's never 
never gonna be my first song and I remember saying that I was like it's never gonna be my first song because it's too much I was like but yes like I want it and it'll eventually see the light of day with me and this is when I was planning on my music coming out in two months little did I know it was gonna be two years six and a half hours later and two years ago is when I started writing new music I got out of my Nickelodeon music contract I signed a deal with Columbia Records Mm -hmm. label has been amazing and I started doing music and honestly we started off like pretty pretty calm like okay. nothing like nothing like what's out right now um and then i got pitched this song karma and it's the first word is i was a bad girl and i was like oh fuck the good song i was like but i can't say that i can't say i'm a bad girl i'm not i'm not i was 18 fresh off of my dream the tour and I was like, I can't say I, was, I, I sang every girl's a super girl last week. Like, I can't <laughs> sing I was a bad girl this week. It doesn't work. I could never hear the song for Miley Cyrus ever in a million years. The fact that that was written for her, even during bangers, that music video that Brit Smith did for this, I loved it. The editing in that is still relevant today. Okay, so I just realized that the audio in this video is kind of garbled in this section. I apologize for that. But what I was saying is I really think that this video is still relevant today. It still fits in with today's trends. And I believe that that's what Jojo Siwa tried to capitalize on. I don't think she did a really good job of that because this song does not match the image of what I think of when I think of Jojo Siwa and I know that that's what she's trying to get away from but she's so odd and so weird and some of these interactions that she's had with people talking about busting a nut to get something done. At this point in time this is this is uh, March 2022 okay. so I'm thinking music's coming out in July like I gotta like bust a nut to get this music done right? I just found that very weird and uncomfortable I don't think she even understands some of the things that she says and I just find this to be her karma because now Brit Smith's song is actually a above hers on the iTunes chart at number five. And that's just wild to me. That's the power of the internet because people are streaming this in protest of Jojo Siwa because they're they're over her. But I want to know what you guys think about this. Do you think that this is Jojo Siwa's karma? Because I think it kind of is. If you made it this far in this video, leave me the rainbow emoji down below because we're talking about Jojo Siwa. If you made it this far in the video, don't forget to like it if you enjoyed it. But with that said, I'm going to get going, you guys. I hope you all have an amazing day and I will see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.